Let us pray. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who, from the cross, looked down upon your mother, overwhelmed with grief and tears, and so truly took compassion on her sorrow, commending her to the care of your disciple John, as also you commended John, and in him, all of us, to her maternal care. Grant me to love and honour your mother with the purest and most ardent love, that I may have her for my mother, and be worthily acknowledged by her as her son. Grant that in every necessity, and especially at the hour of my death, I may find her ever present and at hand to help me. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who with your wounds gaping and your head crowned with thorns, while hanging in misery upon the cross, declared that you were without any consolation. Grant that in all adversity and times of temptation and desolation, I may fly with faith to you, my most holy Father, and putting no confidence in myself, grant that I may place all my hopes in you alone, and entirely resign myself and trust in you. Wound my innermost soul with the remembrance of your wounds, write and imprint them upon my heart. Satiate me wholly with your blood, that all my intentions may be fixed in you alone, and that I may seek and find and hold you fast, possessing you for ever and ever. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who, when your body was exhausted from the loss of blood, gasped for breath, and cried out on the cross that you were tormented with thirst, while you burnt with unspeakable desire for our salvation. Give me grace to thirst most ardently after your honour and the salvation of souls, and be ready cheerfully to spend my, myself for them, according to your will. Grant that no love of any transitory object may possess my soul, that I may never attach myself to any creature, and that even when I am bound to love, I may love only in you. But give me grace to love you above all, and with my whole soul, and quietly to rest in you. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who, when you were thirsty even at the point of death, permitted a sponge filled with vinegar to be offered to you, and that by tasting of this you might make satisfaction for our gluttony, giving us an example of poverty. Grant me the grace to despise any unlawful pleasure and delight, and to avoid any excess in eating and drinking, and may I use with moderation and thanksgiving whatever you do give me for the support of my poor body. So cleanse, I beg you, the taste of my heart, that it may relish nothing except that which is pleasing to you, and may find nothing but bitterness in whatever displeases you. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, you, the greatest lover of the human race, who, when you were, you were bringing out the work of our redemption to a close, wrought yourself as a holy victim upon the altar of the cross for the sin of all mankind. May this be the only end, I beg you, of all my thoughts, words and works, namely, to seek your honour with an upright and sincere heart, and to desire nothing save you alone, Grant that I may never grow weary or lukewarm in your service, but a fervent spirit always be ever renewed within me that I may daily more be more and more inflamed to love and praise you. Praise and honour and glory be to you, O Christ, who willingly underwent death when commending yourself to your Father and bending your adorable head. You gave up the ghost, and thus by laying down your life for your sheep, showed yourself to be the Good Shepherd. You are dead, only begotten Son of God, you are dead, my beloved one, that I may live for ever. What hope, what confidence is laid up for me in your death and in your blood? I glorify you, I give you thanks as far as in me lies. Give me grace to die entirely to sin and all evil desires, and to live to you alone. 
May I think of you alone. May my understanding exercise itself in nothing except you. That, clad in your grace and with holy charity, I may soon after the close of this life come to you, the true paradise. O good Jesus, by your bitter passion and death, grant to me the living pardon and grace, and to the faithful departed rest and everlasting light. Praise, honour and glory be to you, O Christ, at whose death the sun withdrew its light, and the veil of the temple was divided in two. The earth quaked, and the rocks were cut, and the graves opened. May the rays of your grace never leave me, I beg you, you son of righteousness, you that are my God, may they always lighten even the very inmost recesses of my heart, that I may joyfully serve you for ever. Tear away from me the veil of hypocrisy, make the ground of my soul quake with saving penitence, rend in two this heart of stone of mine, that, being wholly renewed within, I may despise anything perishable, and love only the things that are of heaven. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall sing your praise. Thank you. 
A reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark, chapter 9. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, and went with them up into a high mountain by themselves. He was changed in form before them. His clothing became shining, very white, as no cleaner on earth would make it. They came before them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Because he was not certain what to say, for they were in great fear. A cloud came over them, and a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my dearly loved son. Listen to him. Then, looking around, they saw no one any longer, but only Jesus with themselves. And while they were coming down from the mountain, he gave orders to them not to give word to any man of the things that they had seen, until the Son of Man had come back from the dead. They kept saying, questioning amongst themselves, what the coming back from the dead might mean. So they put a question to him, saying, Why do the scribes say that Elijah has to come first? He said to them, Truly Elijah does come first, and puts all things in order. And how is it said in the writings that the Son of Man will go through much sorrow, and be made as nothing? I say to you that Elijah has come, and they have done to him whatever they were pleased to do, even as the writings say about him. And when they rejoined the remainder of the disciples, they saw a great mass of people about them, and the scribes questioning. Straight away all the people, when they saw him, were full of wonder, and running to him, giving him worship. Jesus asked them, What were you questioning them about? And one of their number came to him in answer, Master, I came to you with my son, who has within him a spirit, which takes away his power of talking. Wherever it takes him, it puts him down violently, streaming at the lips and twisted in pain. His strength goes from him. I asked your retired disciples to set it out, but they were not able. He said to them in answer, O generation of little faith, how long will I have to be with you? How long will I put up with you? Bring him to me. And so they took him to them, to him, and when he saw him, the spirit in him straight away became violent, and he went down on the earth rolling around and streaming at the lips. Jesus questioned the father and said, How long has he been like this? As from a child, he said. Frequently it has sent him into the fire and into the water for his destruction. If you are able to do anything, have pity on us and give us help. Jesus said to him, If you are able, all things are possible to him who has faith. Straight away the father of the child gave a cry, saying, I have faith. Make my feeble faith stronger. But when Jesus saw that the people came running together, he gave orders to the unclean spirit, saying to them, You, spirit, who are the cause of his loss of voice and hearing, I say to you, Come out of him. I'll never go into him ever again. But after crying out and shaking him violently, it came out. And the child became like one dead, so that most of them said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he got up. When he had gone into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why were we unable to send it out? He said to them, Nothing will make this sort come out but prayer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read that six days after Jesus began to warn the disciples of what was going to happen to him, and by implication to all those who followed him, he took Peter, James and John up to mountain for a very special encounter. Having promised in verse 1 that some of them would see the kingdom of God, 
Jesus gives these three disciples a glimpse of what is to come. It is worth noting that Jesus did not take all the disciples up the mountain, but just a mere quarter of them, sufficient to give witness in due course as to exactly what happened. In the same way, Jesus reveals to all his faithful different heavenly truths, depending on their needs. It is not for us to know all the secrets of heaven, for we would be incapable of coping with the knowledge. Likewise, it is wrong for us to engage in speculation as to what some of these truths might be. It should be sufficient for us to accept Jesus as he is, and to trust in him, leaving it to him to decide what we are to receive as our education in his ways. Verse 3 tells us that the clothes of Jesus became brilliant white. The use of language suggests that this was a gradual rather than a sudden process, so that the disciples would have been under no doubt that it was still Jesus, their friend and teacher who was in front of them. It also gives us a glimpse of the purity of heaven, for Jesus was shown completely pure and without blemish, his clothes whiter and brighter than any amount of bleach or worldly detergent could ever make them. For once it seems that Peter was lost for words, such was the intensity of the experience and the deep felt fear that the disciples felt. Certainly this would have been a terrifying experience for them, to be shown even for a few brief moments something so very different, so unexpected and out of this world as some would put it. Not surprisingly, they were told to keep quiet about what had happened and what they had seen and heard until they knew that the time had come to speak openly about it. And then, having had the most incredible spiritual experience, they returned to the others to face a crisis. A possessed boy had been brought to the disciples for healing and they had not been able to do anything for him. There was an uproar and Jesus had to step in and take things in hand. Most often after a spiritual high we are open to attack, but we have to be particularly vigilant. The devil had been busy stirring up things and so Jesus had to divert from what we would have, he would have perhaps preferred to be doing, to sort out matters. Belief can be hard. We know that we should believe, but often there is that little nagging doubt in the back of our minds. And here the boy's father appears to have the same problem. For he firstly confesses belief, and then asks for better belief. He accepts that his own belief may be insufficient, and he wants to truly believe. This happens, and his son is healed. There is an important lesson here for us to learn. How often do we pray for faith? I am sure we are quick to pray for the things of the world that we need. But how often do we pray for faith? Let us put true, unquestioning faith at the top of our list when we pray. For faith is the key which unlocks everything else. But also let us remember to be alert especially when our spiritual walk is going well. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who hates nothing that you have made and forgives the sins of all who are penitent, create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We beseech you, Almighty God, look upon the hearty desires of your humble sons, and stretch forth the right hand of your majesty, to be our defence against all our enemies. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.